So with the Corvette C8 embargo finally lifted, we now have the full story on just how fast the Corvette C8 is in the hands of the review companies. And to say it's fast would be a gross understatement. The new 2020 Corvette C8 will do 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds, which has been verified by multiple individuals. It'll cross the quarter mile in just 11.1 seconds at 123.2 miles per hour. It truly is the stuff of magic because the new mid-engine Corvette comes in with less than 500 horsepower, a meager 35 horsepower over the previous model. Yet it shaved off more than one second from the 0 to 60 time of the previous generation. That was only possible due to the grip and the lightning fast dual clutch transmission. Yes, it does look like it's slower than the PDK transmission, yet the fast speed of the shifts in the new Corvette C8 is heavily noted throughout the different review articles. Now, I do want to make something absolutely clear. The smart dual clutch and better rear weight ratio can only carry the Corvette C8 so far. So after 60 miles an hour, the Corvette does begin to fade. The C7 Z06 is a perfect comparison. The C8 base with over 150 less horsepower is quicker to 60, yet by the time they finish the quarter mile, it'll trail behind at 3 tenths of a second. With the weight that the Corvette carries, it just cannot overcome that gap at higher speeds, and that is just the reality. But it absolutely shows you the potential in the next higher horsepower variations of the Corvette C8. I mean, just imagine a wider body version of this car with more tire grip and another 150 horsepower added to the top. Rework a little bit of the understeer issues we're hearing about through some tuning, and you have a car that will give every single supercar out there a run for its money. But this should not take away from the brilliance in what we're seeing in the base Corvette that it's achieved so far. Yes, 0 to 60 is not the only metric that matters. In fact, I would agree that it's not even the most important. But what I would say is that it is one of the most talked about areas, if not the most talked about speed metric. That should put some weight behind the importance of this area, especially when most people who buy the car won't be personally logging their own 60 to 130 mile per hour runs. So let's get to the point of today's video and put in perspective just how fast the Corvette C8 is from a standstill. I pulled up lists from a 0to60.com as they provide accurate times for a massive list of different vehicles. From that list, I found 7 different vehicles that for most part cost multiple times more than the Corvette C8, yet they take more time to get from 0 to 60. The first vehicle we have on the list is the 2016 Ferrari 488 GTB. Ferrari had decided to throw out the old naturally aspirated V8 and stick in a smaller yet more powerful 3.9 liter twin turbo V8. The 488 packs in 660 horsepower at 8000 RPM and is capable of delivering 560 pound feet of torque at just 3000 RPM. The Ferrari weighs only 3250 pounds and is good for a 60 time of 2.9 seconds close but still behind the vet which cost about a quarter of the price. The value truly is just undeniable. Second, we have the all new Ford GT. Ford has been working on this track king for years and in 2017 they finally unveiled their creation. Walking into a Ford dealership and attempting to buy the GT even with cash is not even an option as they had a full interview process just for the vehicle. Many people were surprised with Ford's move to use a twin turbocharged V6, yet even then it produces 647 horsepower at redline and couples that with 550 pound feet of torque. Add in a 7 speed dual clutch and you have yourself a 3 second flat 0 to 60, fast but a full 2 tenths of a second behind the Corvette C8. Next on the list we have the 2012 Lamborghini Aventador. I still remember when this car came out and the impact that it had on the exotic car industry. This car was an absolute success for a Lamborghini and in my opinion will forever hold a spot as a perfect balance between raw performance and updated comfort. The Aventador engine is one of dreams, the 6.5 liter V12 that produced a staggering 691 horsepower with 509 pound feet of torque. Almost as staggering was its base price of almost $400,000. Even with that hefty price, Lamborghini chose to continue with a auto clutch manual instead of a dual clutch, swapping out feel for performance. 
Nevertheless, the car will do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, only a tenth of a second away from the C8. I will say though that this car produces almost 200 more horsepower and makes use of an all-wheel drive system, so falling behind 0 to 60 is a crazy feat. Moving on from there, we have a McLaren that falls to the C8. McLarens are not just known for their elegant body lines and exotic materials, McLarens are known for their speed. The 720S is a mind-boggling fast vehicle, like almost a 10 second flat quarter mile time fast. So taking on this breed of car is a big order. The 2015 McLaren 650S is the second generation of the MP4-12C. It squeezes 641 horsepower out of a 3.8 liter twin turbo V8. The rear wheel drive exotic packs a lightning quick 7 speed twin clutch transmission that allows the car to hit 60 in just 3 seconds flat. It based at over 280,000 and lags behind the C8 by 2 tenths of a second. The fifth car on our list is shocking because it's the million dollar McLaren Senna. Now as I said, we are just looking at 0 to 60 times. This race car built for public roads is in another league in terms of true power. Yet, if you pair these two up at a starting line and run them to 60, the Corvette will come out on top. The Senna produces 789 horsepower from a twin turbo V8. Redline is a sky high 8,000 RPM, and the car only weighs 3,000 pounds. It looks like it came straight out of a movie, attempting to show some sort of futuristic car lookalike. And again, it costs a million dollars. $1 million could buy you 10 Corvettes with enough money to pay for their taxes and gas for a lifetime, so something that I felt we should compare it to. Following up from the Senna, we have a car that is really important, as this is a car that will be compared constantly to the C8, and that is the Porsche 911. Porsche truly knows that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yes, of course, they're always tweaking and updating their cars, but they constantly stick with their original recipe the exact opposite of what Chevrolet has decided to do with their new VET. Continuing on, the all new 992 Carrera S bring in a 0 to 60 time of 3 seconds flat, thanks to its 443 horsepower 3.0 liter twin turbocharged flat 6. The PDK transmission receives an extra gear and the car starts at 115,000. What's even more crazy is that this is a direct competitor and it is still bested in the quarter mile, coming in at 11.3 versus the Corvette's 11.1. I think this is one of the best examples of the performance value that we can see in this whole lineup. Our seventh and final car is a vehicle we've already mentioned, but it's none other than the Corvette C7 Z06, the C8's older bigger brother, which comes with a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that's good for 650 horsepower and a monstrous 650 pound-feet of torque. While living up to the Z06 name, the 650 pound-feet of torque can make the C7 a handful at all times. Setting that power down to the ground can be extremely difficult, and it's what gives the car a 0 to 60 time of 2.9 seconds or a tenth of a second behind the new mid-engine Corvette. Nevertheless, the Z06 gets the last laugh in the quarter as it grabs a 10.8 second time, besting the smaller younger brother by 3 tenths of a second. Well everyone, there you have it, 7 different cars that all cost substantially more than the base Corvette C8, yet fall behind it in 0-60 to time performance, less the Z06. So what are your thoughts on the Corvette C8's performance now that we have confirmed data? Make sure you let me know in the comment area below. The last thing I wanted to cover in today's video is that it finally appears that the strike between GM and the Union is over. This strike has already impacted the C8's manufacturing start date and was beginning to worry many people as further delays seemed imminent. Luckily, that appears not to be the case and the C8 should stay on track from this point further. From what we have heard, the C8 will start production at some time towards the third week of January. We're not quite sure as to when the first deliveries will take place, but I will make sure to keep you all updated as soon as we hear anything. Thank you all so much for checking out my video today. If you did enjoy it, please think about hitting that like button as it helps support my channel and it's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, think about joining our community and hitting that subscribe button. As always, you all take care and we'll see you next video.